In our last few episodes, we highlighted some of the useful new features in Express 4, hoping to make the case for why you would want to upgrade an app to it. We looked at all of that in the context of a toy app that didn't do anything remotely useful. Well, in this episode, we take our knowledge of Express 4 and apply it to an actual application, that web sensation node slash. Let's install Express 4. First, we need to remove Express from our package file, so let's do that. Then, we whack Express from our node modules directory with the little rm rf magic. And finally, we install the latest Express with npm install dash dash save Express. This is exactly what we did in the pointless app that did nothing. Now, if Michael Bay has taught me anything, it's that you can't have too many explosions. So let's try to run the server. Mega boom. Let's get into fixing this. Our first explosion is from Body Parser. We saw how to fix that in episode 26. We just install the new middleware and then lay it down in config application.js. With that in place, we can start our server again. Just as we might expect, we get another explosion. This time, it's on method override. Again, we have an easy installation, npm install dash dash save method override. Now method override isn't going to quite be a drop-in replacement. We've been using a post body to communicate that we need to override the HTTP verb associated with the request. However, the new middleware by default only looks at request headers. Luckily, the project page for method override contains example code for what we want to do. And here's what it looks like. Here we simply look for a request body. If we have one, we check to see if it includes a method property. If so, we remove it from the post body and return the method we found. I augmented this with a call to to lowercase to normalize our output from this. That idea I got from the old middleware that used to be bundled inside Express, which I linked to in the show notes. Now do note that this middleware must come after body parser. Also, this file is getting a bit out of hand, but restructuring it will be a task for another time. Anyway, we restart the server and move on to our next one. Nope, let's fix cookie parser. This is always fun. We don't need this one anymore, so we can delete it. Cookie parser is totally fixed. Let's try again. Oops, now we get to fix cookie session. Have a guess at how we install it. Setting it up is fairly easy too. It looks pretty much the same as before, only we have to explicitly require the module now. I also took the opportunity to rename the session cookie to something more descriptive. Now, we get one last explosion before the app will run. It's the router. Let's do a quick fix of just removing the call to app.useapp.router. And finally, the server will start and we can even log in. And we could probably stop here since everything is working, but let's update our routes to the new Express 4 style while we have the hood up. Here is what our route file used to look like. It's getting pretty long and we're tangling concerns in this file. The main app section really doesn't have anything to do with user signing up or authentication. We know from episode 27 that Express 4 lets us modularize our route declarations like never before, so let's take this one step further. Let's pretend that our three main sections, we could almost call them services, are three genuinely independent entities. What might that look like? First, let's make a directory where our route declarations will live. We do that with makedir config routes. Next, let's make a file config routes root.js. Let's create a simple module skeleton here that will work for attaching routes to an app object. I think this is straightforward. The signature is the exact same as what we had in our old config routes.js. Using our old route file as a guide, let's move over the parts that we need for the root routes. That's just our home page, about page, bestiary, and loot routes. As I write more and more node code, I find file organizations that I think work better. One of those is to include everything that I require at the top of a file. So I'm going to pull out the require statements and move them up top. I like to put external modules in one group and internal modules, ones I write, in another, and both groups are alphabetized. Next, we need to define a router object, so let's get that, with just var root router equals express.router. Then we change app to root router and call the route function on it. Then we put our verb in. 
The last step is to actually attach this router to our application, which we do with app.use, give it the root, and then root router. So what we have here is our non-game, non-authentication routes, self-contained. This makes for a smaller file, and that means less to reason about at one time. Now I've already done this work for the routes that used to be off of slash app. I didn't like that name, so I changed it to portal. This file went through the same process that the root routes did, but there's a thing I want to call out. Remember that we mount our routers at a given point, and in this case we're mounting the portal off of the root path at portal. However, within our router, our routes are relative to each other. What does this mean? Well, in the old file, we declared the profile path at slash app slash profile. Within our new Express 4 router, we declared at just slash profile, but then the router itself is mounted at portal. This creates a total path of slash portal slash profile that our browser needs to hit in order to access the profile, as we can see here. We need our application to be aware of these new files though, so let's do that. First, we trash the old file since we don't want it. Next, we make a new file inside of config routes called index.js. Inside of that file, we put the following code. What is going on here? First, this is a pretty standard module structure. We declare a function and we export it. Now let's have a look real quick at config application.js where we used to call into our routes. You'll notice the line didn't change at all. When you require a directory in Node, it looks for a file named index.js. That's the file we just declared. So Node goes to our config routes directory and then uses this index.js file to hand us back a module. At this point, it should be pretty straightforward. Now we're just requiring each route file individually. Index.js acts as a wrapper for us so that if we add new services into the app, we don't have to monkey about with our config file. My long-term strategy here is to get config application.js down to a handful of lines. Well, with that done, finally we can start our server and see that we spend all of this time doing something that has no visible difference. Is that a buzzkill? My bad. Yeah, so there wasn't much new here, except for the additional middlewares that we fix. So why did we bother taking a whole episode for this? We just updated a core dependency in an actual application. I noticed that it took about 10 to 20 minutes. Our database layer wasn't affected. Our custom middlewares weren't affected. We didn't have to change anything related to our views. Authentication still just works. How many web frameworks do you know of where you can update a major version in that short of a time? This is what's so great about the Node philosophy of smaller packages that do one thing well versus the kitchen sink frameworks and other ecosystems. Sure, there's a bit of boilerplate code to write the first time, but updates aren't as painful. We are finally done with our upgrade to Express 4. So going forward, we'll get to look at new useful modules and how to integrate more features into our growing app. We've got some great stuff in the pipe, including the real-time web, useful dev tools, deployment, client-side frameworks, and more. Until then, happy coding.